Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be episode 19, or the finale, of Building Deed. This series has carried us all the way from March of this year all the way to now August, and it has been a fun process. It got a little bit stressful at the end, but I pulled through and I finished the mock in time for Brick Fair Virginia 2023. Me and my friend Daniel, who collaborated with me on the project, put it together at the show and everything went smoothly. So this is going to be the final part documenting the process of finishing up the mock, putting it together at the show and setting everything up. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so it is currently Wednesday night. It is one week before the start of Brick Fair Virginia. Basically, I have just been working nonstop trying to finish up the second half and I did make a ton of progress which I'll show you guys but before I get to that I did go ahead and add in the vine growing on the round building I think this works really well it has a touch of olive green which kind of blends nicely into the olive green on the sand green dome so I actually really like that and then now we can take a look at the progress that I've made on this second half all right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is this back section here. This is six studs away from the split of the base plates here. So I added that in. And then here are all the cheese crater slopes. That is what meets up nicely with Daniel's bridge. So that will kind of slot right in here. And then we have tiles hanging over a plate that also meets up nicely with the bridge and that's kind of the floor. And then carrying over all the way out, I just kind of brought it all the way to the end. I did have to make one more BrickLink order for this mock, which I believe now is the last one because at this point I don't have any more time to wait for shipping. But basically I ordered a bunch of more of these cylinders for the railing because I wanna have a raised up section, which means there's gonna be more railing in the actual city. So quick little order with that, couple other pieces, some cheese slopes and stuff. And then if I fully zoom out here, I can kind of show you guys the entire shot. All right, so starting all the way over here, I made this little cutout. This is kind of the footprint of the main gateway building. This is the left side of it. And then over here is the right side. This is just to save tiles as well as to let me know where it sets down. And then I'm doing dark bluish gray on the wall on the back here because I'm doing dark bluish gray on the back of the building as well as over all the way over there I started with dark bluish gray on the back wall. So just carrying that all the way through. Basically, I just completely tiled off this base plate. This was the first thing that I did, and then I moved on to the second base plate, which is also almost completely tiled off. And at this point, I think what I'm gonna try and do is a bunch of snot to save parts. I did a little section here, as you can see, this little box here is actually bricks on their sides. so. It kind of blends in pretty well. It's not really something that you notice, which is good. Obviously, I don't want it drawing eyes, but it saves me tiles, which I'm starting to actually run dangerously low on. So it saves me there, and I think it's going to help me out actually immensely, especially where it's going to be underneath the AAT. You're not really going to be able to see it anyways, so I think that's going to actually be really nice. And then over here, I have this started row of plates. I'm going to put the railing here it's going to stick all the way out this is going to be where the raised up section is and then there's going to be two buildings one way in the corner one starting right around here so that's my plan and all the progress that i've got done so far i think this is pretty good considering the amount of time that i've spent i've gotten one two base plates done the third one is going to be pretty fast and i'm almost done with the second one so i think i'm in a pretty good spot for now I finally have it in hand. This is the final Bricklink order that I'm making for this mock. This is from the Brick Lady, or that Brick Lady. Pretty nice store. They had a bunch of parts that I needed for Theed, so I made a quick little order for the railing pieces and some other stuff that I'll show you guys, but I'll just go ahead and open this up really quick and show you what I got. All right, so as I said, the main part of the order were a bunch more of the cylinder pieces to finish up the railing. And then the next thing were, I just got a couple 
one by four tiles in tan to make sure that I had enough long tiles to do the top of the railing and then some one by six tiles in tan some one by six plates these I got because on the octagon building I started running really low on those as well as these one by two cheese slopes so I just threw those in and then the next piece are these one by two tiles in tan I only had like two of these left and I've been using them really sparingly so I just decided to buy some so I didn't really have to skirt around it. And then I did get some more TransClear 1x2 plates because for the windows, I started running really low of these. And then here, the last part are just some 1x4 tiles in light bluish gray. So that is all of the parts that I bought. I have a lot more progress to show you guys, but the first thing that I want to get into is this mock is obviously modular but how do I put it together? Because I'm having all of these seams go right up to the edge and nothing is overlapping or anything. Basically the way that I'm doing this is, I'm not sure if I covered this in a previous video, I don't think I did, but basically I'm using the Technic axle bricks and I'm putting one on this side and one on this side. And then over here, as you can kind of see, there is that little red Technic axle sticking out Basically, that is going to join the two sides together. So if I kind of line these up here, it will snap in like that. For the most part, it'll just kind of keep it together. And I'm going to connect all of the sides on this first row. And then obviously, once those are all connected, I'll push it in to that row and then it'll be kind of everything interlocked. So I think that's going to work pretty well. I've done this for my past two collaboration mocks that had to be obviously separated and it's worked out pretty well. And then I have basically finished the entire bottom section over here. I added in the wall that is going to be the you know barrier of the raised up section. I did run up the lights here as well. So this is kind of not really connected right now, but everything is basically done so we'll go ahead and put this thing back together and then i'll show you guys what it looks like because i was running out of tiles like i mentioned i had to go and make a bunch of sections just using bricks on their sides like how i've been doing all of the raised up sections just the little floor tiles basically that had to take up a lot of space because i had no tiles to do it unfortunately but pretty much what that meant was I decided to make this entire section here all snot because this is where the AAT is going to be sitting. So it's going to cover up most of this and it's not going to be a focal point because there's going to be so much going on on top of it. So that was basically the compromise that I had to make. So now I can go through the fun part of putting all those pieces back in. Like I mentioned, I do have the lights set up. Basically, this corner building is going to be removable, and that is how I'm going to access the light box that's down in there. I couldn't really figure out a better way to do this. I didn't really want to put it in the road like I had this one. I probably should have, but because of the tiles that I was using, I was just trying to figure out how to make those fit in there, and I was starting to run out of big plates that would be able to be removed like a panel to access this. So I just decided that it would be easier to have this entire building be removable. It's only attached by four studs here. So then once I attach that and then remove it, I can go in, flip the little switch. As you can see, the light just turned on over here. So that's how I'm going to be accessing the lights on this side. And as you guys saw, I did complete the staircase going down the middle here and obviously the railing. I was able to use all those pieces from the orders 
it actually was really helpful because I would have been out of these tiles, the longer ones, and obviously I was out of the cylinder pieces, so that went really nicely. I actually am super happy with the way this looks. Just not even having the building set up yet, it adds so much to the mock because before this, the entire section was just flat and one level. There was a tiny bit of a step up for the greenery section, but it's only a plate and a half, so it doesn't really add in that much depth. But now having this, it's going to add in two bricks of height, and it's also going to match up a lot better with Daniel's part because he's obviously having the same kind of thing. So I'm really happy with this. I think it turned out really, really nicely. And at this point, I'm just super excited to have all the buildings done and be able to flip this around and see it from the front. Early on in the series, I came up with this dome design where I'm using the planet sphere, half of it from the Yavin 4 set, I believe. And I came up with this ring design of gold clips at the bottom and then added on this nice little spire on the top. And up until this point, I kind of haven't talked about it. It's been a little bit of a mystery as to what building it's gonna go on, how it's gonna look and all of that. So I finally put it to use in this building. This is actually pretty similar to one that Daniel is making using a similar design with this dome. So I wanted to make them look pretty similar, the two buildings. His is actually going to be a couple stories higher and have an area on the bottom with a door and windows and stuff like that. But I didn't really want to have a super tall building over in the corner because this is already raised up two bricks from the rest of the buildings on the mock. So I wanted this to be a little bit shorter. And I came up with this idea of having park benches around a little greenery planter area that you see kind of a lot in cities just an area for civilians and pedestrians to kind of take a seat, hang out around some nice greenery. So that was my idea. And I came up with a pretty nice design for the benches, which kind of also formed into the design that I used for my greenery or planter. And I went and used some cool like fern teeth pieces to make it. So I'll kind of show you guys that. Now taking a look at the park bench and greenery section, I knew that I wanted to use these reddish brown grill pieces because they look like a park bench. They kind of have the outline on the sides and then the horizontal lines and then like a support going down the middle. So I really like the way that it looks for a park bench and the bottom I just elevated with a two by two round plate. So that is right there. And then to attach the back panel, you can pop this bottom section out here. The back section of the bench, I just attached to a two by four plate and then to give it some height to match up better, I threw some tiles on the bottom, and then this kind of lent itself to building a square for me to attach all of these. And then to make this look nice and like it's supposed to be there, I decided to make this nice greenery section. So that is built with a bunch of different flower pieces here, and then I attached in some different sword pieces, kind of like a cool looking plant. And then there's some different colored flower pieces at the bottom just to kind of break up the greens and then add in some more vibrance with color. So I'm really, really happy with the way that this came out. At this point, all of the buildings on this mock are done, except for the top half of the arch building, which is what I'm going to tackle next. I just finished building this one. This is one of, if not my new favorite building on the mock. I really, really like how this turned out. So I'm super excited to be able to show you guys that. And just as a little side note, I did go ahead and add in a little Easter egg to this gazebo. If I remove this building, you guys can kind of see, I put in this mini kit and it's attached from the top or the ceiling with some clear bricks. And I just really like the way that it looks. It's something that you don't really notice unless you're looking in there. And when you do look in there, it looks exactly like that would be how the game is set up. Just there's like a double jump character that you have to jump up there and get it. But it's also nicely hidden. It's not like sticking out too far. I think this is like the perfect amount of subtlety for an Easter egg. And then moving on to this building, spinning it around to the front. This one is probably the most in-depth building I've made for this mock. The first thing that I wanted to do was using these nice arch pieces here and I decided to make like a little terrace or a porch on the front and I really like the way this looks. It has a nice arched shape here and then obviously the nice arches here and then because of the door size the middle is actually raised up a little bit which I think looks pretty cool and that is what lends this shape 
for this little section of roof, which is kind of the same design as on that middle building up there. So I was able to include that in more buildings, which is definitely good. And then I was also able to add in kind of the gutter piping that goes around the side here. This I really, really like. I think that this angle part kind of snaking its way around looks really, really nice over here. And then on the side, it's just a nice, simple, just straight down, kind of like what we got going on on that other building. But I'm really, really happy with this. And then I do have just some small little windows in there. And then on the side here, I'm using a window design that I kind of got from Daniel with the headlight bricks and tiles design. So that I took from Daniel and then I just went through and added in some of the snot building. This is all on the same plane. It's not like the half plate offset stuff like I have up on these windows here. It's all just on the same plane, but you can't even really tell the difference. And I think it looks nice. It's also two plates at the bottom and one at the top just because of the size of the window. And I decided to use one by one trans clear bricks just to save because I'm really, really starting to run low on parts for this mock. And then at the very bottom, it's like a nice short stubby window because it's like the ground floor. And I added in the flower box that we saw multiple times on that building also on that one. So this is kind of tying in to the first buildings here with also this roof and then Daniel's side with this. And then it's just kind of a weird, interesting shape. I decided not to make it just this big straight column building. I wanted to add in more kind of variants to it. So I added in this big chunk that sticks out here. And then I just added on this nice little light bluish gray tiled section with that mini dome. I was finally able to use that. I think it looks pretty decent. It's kind of almost similar to some of the stuff that you see in the complete saga, like those domes that you ground pound or smash to blow up. But I actually really like this. I think it looks really cool. And then I have kind of the vines trickling up the side here, continuing on and then coming down the front. This is actually because I ran out of the arch piece that I was using for these. I had one here and then I didn't have enough for this. So what I did was I just covered it up with vines and then on the inside you can see it's just like some slopes that I made to kind of trace out the shape. So if you do get a look in there, it kind of looks the same, but that was just a way that I was able to add in another window, kind of make the front of this building look you know, the way it's supposed to. And the last thing I did was the roof. I knew that I wanted to use these slopes, but I didn't have enough of them to make this a nice shape. So I ended up using some curved slopes here and then also some really small ones because I didn't have enough to finish it out. So it has this nice kind of weathered look, which I think looks pretty good. I used some olive green so that it kind of carries in with the roofs of the lower section. So I think it looks pretty good. And I did this kind of trim going around kind of like how I had it on that building and that building way over there. So just all around tying this into as many of the buildings as I could. All right, so I've made a decent amount of progress on the arch building. This is the new final height. I think this is a lot better. The original version was, I don't know, maybe three bricks lower than this. So I built it up a little bit higher. Basically the way I did that is by making the actual windows a brick extra so made those a little bit taller all the way around on this side over here you can kind of see the original how it used to look i definitely like this more it's way more accurate to the movie so this is definitely better and then i did go ahead and add in some more bricks here so that i could bring up this dark tan line so now this is all on the same level which looks so much better over here again you can see the difference and this just looks miles miles better so it is currently the morning of tuesday i stayed up as late as i could last night and then got some sleep so that i can make the drive today basically i completely finished the arch building this took me so long and there was a lot more challenges with it than i anticipated but i did go ahead and make the taller windows like i mentioned i fully built up all of these sides here and i did make these little things that I just sit on the roof like this and then I'm starting to work on the dome I'm almost done with it and I added in the doors and everything like that so this thing is finally basically done I just have to finish up the domes that'll sit on there and basically after that this thing will be all ready to go which is amazing I am definitely ready to be done with this thing 
Staying up until 2 in the morning to finish this was definitely not the most fun thing that I've ever done. But I did go ahead and pack up most of the buildings for it. The only one that is left out so far is obviously this one and the round building. And then I'm just going to stack all of the road base plates in my car. And I'll show you guys all that before I leave. But this is the current progress. As you can see here, this is the dome that I'm going to be using. It's pretty nice. This is like the third or fourth version that I went through just because I was so tired and burned out that I couldn't really come up with something that looked good. So I just went to sleep and then got a few hours of rest in there and now I'm back at it. So this I started with the base size and then I made this kind of rounded sloped up type of shape at the top. And then I added in some olive green patches as I went and then I made the sides here. I did another thing with kind of like the half plate offsets, although this time I couldn't use the slid 1x2 tiles because there was nowhere to attach them. So what I did was I actually stuck in some of the roller skate pieces, which let you attach plates or tiles like so. And then when you kind of cover it up, it looks like that, which actually looks really nice. So I have one more side to do of this. And then I think I will need to kind of bolster up the sides of this, make them kind of bigger. As you can see here, this is all like plates because I have no dark tan bricks. So that was also not fun. This probably should have taken me like maybe three minutes to build, but it ended up taking me like 20 because of all the plate stacking that I had to do. But that will just kind of sit in here. I'm not gonna worry about attaching these. It's just gonna sit in, kind of has a place that it rests. And then once I kind of figure this in, I'll just make a place for that to sit too. All right, so I've started packing up my car and this is the first time that I'm filming outside. So if it doesn't look or sound all that great, just bear with me. Basically, this is the trunk of my car. I have a bag here with some parts in there and I have the AAT and the speeder in there. So this is just extra stuff to kind of fiddle around with when I get there. I have some stuff for vines. This over here is the arch building. I did end up finishing most of it. I do have one of the domes, as I mentioned to you guys earlier. So that's basically done there. These are two of, actually, these are four of the road plates. All the buildings pop off and I flipped down the lights. I taped everything so they don't kind of roll around and everything. So that's all in there. In this box way back here, is all of the other buildings. I have, as you can see, kind of the top of that one. There's another one next to it. This is kind of the gazebo-ish building. And then I have two other mocks in that box as well. Everything's kind of bubble wrapped. So hopefully it doesn't go flying and break everywhere. This is all of my clothes. And then this is a camera bag. This is my other camera, it's my older one. It's the one that I use to take pictures. I just sat this here so that hopefully this kind of doesn't rock back and forward too much. I might go in put in like a blanket or something just so this doesn't like shift all over the place and wreck everything but that's basically the trunk setup for now and in the back seat i have both of my tripods for my cameras and these plates i'm leaving together hopefully these trees will be able to kind of take the swaying back and forth i decided to just try and hope that they survive before ripping them off so that if they do fall off, then whatever, I'll have to set them up, but at least I'll have the chance that they make it. And then these stayed together because of the way that I made that. So I'm hoping that that kind of works out and my seats are like the fake leather. So they don't, doesn't really move too much. So I'm hoping that that kind of works out, but this is kind of the way that I'm doing this right now. And as I said, I'll have more stuff getting packed in here, but this is kind of the setup. So now we can go ahead and hit the road and I'll show you guys what it looks like when we get everything set up. All right, so you might remember the dome that I had originally and I made that at like 2 a.m. and my mind was kind of fried so it didn't really look all that round. And I'm at Daniel's house currently and he showed me a like the sphere generated Lego sphere or half dome or whatever you want to call it. And it looks so much better so we spent last night and some of this morning on wednesday putting this together obviously the top isn't completely finished but this looks so much better it's more round it looks like a lot more like an actual circle so we took apart my old one this is basically how it's put together 
on the other one it was just like the square base and then I made the sides so this is kind of similar but these sides have kind of parts sticking off the ends so when you put it together it makes a way more round shape so it just looks way better in general basically you just take this and then you attach the sides kind of like this And when you have that on, then you can take your sides and then the side like here on the top where this overlaps, you put the flat side. So when it meets together like that, kind of carries over the rounded shape like that. And then you can go ahead and just work your way around attaching on the sides. So you get to this point and you have the shape and then on the bottom you can just go through and attach some just into the corners to brace the sides because right now it's not super strong and once it's like this now that all the sides are kind of connected to each other so it's really really strong and rigid and that is basically the dome so i made two of these obviously as i mentioned the tops aren't finished but when I put this on, the backside isn't going to be seen, and it's also some of it's going to be chopped off. So we'll kind of just flatten out the back and take those plates and finish up the tops of these two. So that is basically what this is looking like. As of right now, we're just packing up everything. He's packing up his sections of the mock and all his buildings and everything. Mine's all in my car already. And then we're going to head over and set it all up.
right, guys, that is going to wrap up the finale in the series of Building Theed. This has been by far my largest undertaking for this channel. Almost 20 videos on updates for Theed, and by the time I post all the content that I have for Theed, it will be over 20 videos related to this mock. And I think in the past, my largest project before this was I think like nine videos for my most Isley collaboration that me and Daniel did back in 2019. So this has been quite the project. It has been a lot of hours going into building and designing aspect as well as the editing and filming aspect of this project. And I am so pleased with the result that I was able to put out for you guys and as well as just myself being able to look back and revisit and rewalk through the entire process of building this mock. I'm very happy with the production quality that I was able to do for the series. I bought a new camera for this. I got lights and just an entire new setup for this. So I'm very happy with the result that I was able to use and I plan on improving and just continuing to get better at that aspect as well as just being a better builder going forward. So thank you guys. Thank you every one of you for watching and liking and commenting and subscribing on all of these videos. It has been such a humbling experience to watch this process. This has also been my largest series from a performance standpoint. So I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for watching the videos. And to those of you that subscribed, thank you. It really does mean a lot to me. I'm going to continue to post on this channel regularly. I'm going to try to have one video every week. And probably when I do a mock series, it's going to be every other week and then just a different unrelated video on the in-between weeks just to give myself more time to build. That's been working really nicely the past few weeks that I've been doing that. So thank you guys, everybody, for watching, and I will see you all in the showcase video coming next Sunday. And then the week after that will be the cinematic video for Theed, and then after that is on to other things. I'll have more projects coming. If you guys have any ideas for what you want to see me do next, definitely leave them in the comments. I'm open to suggestions. I want to try to do something that's a little bit different from anything that I've done before. So I'm always looking for ideas from anybody that has any interesting ideas. Definitely leave them in the comments. I'll be looking through and replying to every comment. So thank you guys so much for watching through the entire course of the series. And I'll see you on Sunday. Goodbye.